So I know the whole thing has to come down, get, everything has to get taken apart anyway. So I'm not that concerned. I just don't want to damage maybe some of the internals. All the stuff on the outside is uh, pretty much toast or nothing more is really going to happen to it. I think we should probably see if we can get the spark plugs out of it. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, they're buried in there. And get some oil down in the cylinders. Maybe we'll purge a little bit of the mouse nest. Anybody home? There's this hole. It usually builds up behind the fan too. Come on, baby. <laughs> flat. <laughs> that was going to be an issue. Look at that, huh? Clean break. Is it bent? Was it bent? So hidden back in here, outer sanctum of the horde under all that snow and car covers these VW engine parts for 1600 yes believe it or not I may want to go get a shovel because <laughs> they're under that right there I'm done digging. Let's see how frozen it is shut. It's got a lot of ice on it. Hey critters, raccoon jumps out. So in here is a stash of parts. It's like some old pistons and cylinders. We got some pistons and cylinders. We have another long block, which I also think is a B. If my memory serves me correct. And I think that's a set of heads for the same. That's a single port, that's a dual port. That won't be the same. Yeah, looks like there might be another single port right there too. I think the valve guides are gone in them though. Well, possibly maybe between the two of them, use them for parts, put it together in the missing cylinder that we need to steal from there. And while I'm here, I think I'll grab this other VW stuff too. So we have exhaust, rear tin, a fan shroud. There are cylinder heads somewhere back in this stash. Those, those mirrors. I was looking for those mirrors. I just found them. I want those for the orange truck. Good. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go steal those while we're here. After being dry in my stash for probably about 15 years, Mother Nature was nice enough to wash it off for me on the way over. Great. And we're still hunting for parts. And this is old Prom Queen, which I guess was red, white, and blue at one time. And she's a stash of goodies, and I'm sure critters at the same time too. We are looking for a doghouse or a fan shroud. That might be more pistons too, right there. If you guys see anything through, we're gonna go scavenge through here and possibly throw some crap in the trunk and the trunk, the truck, and bring it back with us. One thing about hoarding, you forget all the goodies you got stashed away. That's a dual port. 
Got a transmission, axles, what's in here? That can go with us. If it's got an offset, it's got an offset oil cooler. We could probably put this offset one on there. I think we can. I'm gonna go look. Maybe we could just run the other fan shroud. Nice, that old box can come with me. I think we're gonna do a little bit of digging and uh, just get stuff back there so I know what I have. There's an intake too, a dual port intake. Fan shroud, all kinds of good stuff. What we got in here? This sort of piece of good stuff. That's actually <laughs> close to 100 pistons, I think. Are they new or old? Or I'm sure they're old. Ooh, maybe not. Those may be brand new. Nope. Brand Jeez. used. That's all right. I don't you... remember if they're 15 or 16. I think they're 16. I would probably guess too. Right here. Forward stroke on the side. Well, they're less used than the ones that I have on it. Well, after picking the hoard and not spending any money, which is the purpose that I'm trying to go shoot forward with putting this engine together, we have uh, some cylinders. I actually have a whole another set of used ones, but I found some cylinders by themselves to replace the broken one that would not come out of the head. Uh, cylinder head with good valves in it to replace a broken valve in one and a bent valve in the other. Hopefully we can re uh, rebuild those single port heads. Some tins that were rotted out. The rocker assembly that was rotted and rusted that won't move. The front pulley, or actually rear pulley, fan pulley, that was bad. We have a new one of those. We have a fuel pump that we found used. An offset oil cooler for an offset fan shroud that is delete of any heating uh, hoses coming off it to go clean it up. And a good use clutch, pressure plate, and flywheel assembly. Well, good enough for the purpose that we're gonna use it for anyway. And not but not least, not but not least, <laughs> a set of a good used wires that I found in the stash and a couple of exhaust systems with J tubes. Uh, some fashion of that will get put on that engine. Again, this engine, I'm not showing you what's going on yet, but it is <laughs> when it's all together, it will make sense as far as uh, why I didn't bother putting a bunch of money into it. And I'm not going to go crazy with cleaning everything and painting everything because it'll all be for nothing anyway. So the speed things up a tad i think i'm just going to go take a bunch of time take the junk off of here clean this up when we start getting into fixing the cylinder heads and getting the pistons back in and all that kind of stuff i'll bring you back one way to tell the condition of an engine or how it's taken care of i should say when you pop the oil strainer off is how much sludge is built in around it and you pop the screen down. Yeah. That gives you an indication right there. <laughs> That's uh she wasn't as loved as much as she should have been. Let's get the strainer down though. Get an idea what that looks like. Sucker's like welded in. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> Generally, you could just rinse them and put them back in together. Just to, it's a oil filter, but it's more of a screen than anything. Yeah. You can see how much mud has built up around that. A lot of times, too, just from sitting. All the crap in the oil will settle out of the oil. I'm looking where the pickup is right in here. It sucks the oil up through here and then through the screen and up through the center. So it doesn't look like it was clogged completely, but definitely needs a little bit of love, huh? I'll probably take kerosene after I get done cleaning the block. The block. I'll come back with kerosene, probably uh, slosh some of that through it. Kind of break up some of the crap that's in it. So you can see, let's go zero that out. So this is a uh, a gauge just measuring in thousands. We're gonna try to get an idea how much plays in a crank. Move it one way, and you move it the other. So I'm gonna say it's about fourteen thou, fourteen or fifteen thou. It's got. 
You can adjust it. There is shims underneath the flywheel. We'll probably deal with that maybe a little bit later. There's three shims. You can kind of change the thicknesses of them to take up some of the space and try to make an improvements on it. It should be around six. I think six is around the max on it. So we're definitely over. Uh, the clutch beats up on them a lot. Every time you sit there at a light and you're holding your foot on the clutch, you're literally pushing pressure against the side of the crank with uh, all that spring force that is there. You're trying to... Uh, cancel that out when you uh, push the clutch in. But anyway, the crank uh, takes a wear on that. So that's just get a general idea what we have for a bottom end. She's a, a tad on the sloppy side on the bottom end. <laughs> yeah, we can own joke. All right, I'm gonna go continue. Let's actually, let's go flip it, see what comes out of it for oil, make sure no water comes out of it. So yeah. Just a little hint of it. You see a little bit of diff discoloration dripping out. No metal though. So you get rid of that nasty front pulley. It is loose, but not loose, but not coming out. The nut's loose. Walk down with kerosene. Let's just soak in a little. Let's get that clutch off of there. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> I'm not expecting good things, let's just say. Um. Yeah, a little bit of rust. <laughs> we actually probably clean up. Looking at the disc, how close it is to the rivets. That shot. You can see it on this side. With a little uh, cross hatches, vents go across that it's ground away and it's almost down to the rivets. Good thing we got a good used one in stock. Get a bunch of kerosene with a wire wheel on a drill, a nylon wire wheel. Cleaned everything up pretty good. Good enough anyway. Let's go get one of those cylinders back to functioning condition so we can plug up that hole. I tried cleaning it up with Scotch-Brite. And it's still got some like rusty crud right there. I don't know if you can see it. So let's go run a hone through it. And hone it again, just to try to break that rust off. It's really not doing anything. It's already old rings that are seated. Let's go give her. Of that. <laughs> See if that did anything for us. I just want to get rid of that rust, really. Plus, we'll, get it, we'll be able to see what the ridge looks like now, because it'll leave a, a tell. Mm. Got little scratches on that side. Get you closer. You see all the scratches that showed up on that one? Get the light bit further away. And there's the, the ridge. That's where all the power is being made, so it kind of wears on the end of that cylinder wall. Let's take the one that's a little bit more rusty. This one. Let's go run the same thing on that, see how that cleans up for us. Take the better of the two. See if that one's any better. I 
I don't see those deep scratches going down the side. I see a little bit right there. That's where the end of the ring is usually. I think we'll be fine with either one. That one doesn't look terrible though. That's probably the better of the two. Still has a little bit of rust staining in it down below. You can see again the, where the compression happens right there and it pushes. Where's the tip of the cylinder out a little bit? It scratches. Kind of the same scenario. I'll pick the best of the two, but I think it's going to be this one. I'm going to run just a little bit more of the stone through it. Get a little bit more of that rust off of there. Had a couple of studs that pulled. So I heated them up, got the nuts off, brought them over to the wire wheel, cleaned the threads up. But I want to run a nut just over them. There's a nut in the socket. Just to make sure that, like that one, doesn't have a bind. There it goes. So that when I go to torque the heads later on, you don't have any, any resistance. I'm not going to pull all the pistons and clean the rings and all. They all seem pretty good. Everything floats fine. I don't see any binding or any buildup in there. So other than wiping them down to make sure there's no contamination on them, we're just going to go slide that other cylinder right back on. air diffuser plate it goes essentially under that fin if that fin was there but what they do is the air as the air blows down between the cylinders it makes it kind of circulate going around instead of just blowing straight through and getting a hot spot on the bottom it makes it so the air kind of travels around and exits out roughly that direction what's really going to need some love is the cylinder heads this is the one that had the uh, keeper fall off and bent that valve that exhaust valve let's go tap that out of there take a quick look at what that seat looks like let's see if there's any damage to it hang that off the bench Give us a little bit of room there she is I think I had a wobble to her. Let's go see how the, how the how the seat fared. All the stuff needs to get cleaned up, but I don't see anything standing out at us. You know, I don't see any big hammer marks like it where it took on some heavy damage. I'm gonna get the rest of the valves off of, out of it. Uh, Zippo sent me this funky VW cylinder head valve, spring, valve removal tool. I'm gonna give that a fire up and see if we get uh, all the valves out. Let's give that a shot. Oh, 
part is you gotta get the little keepers off of it. Now that sure is easier than the C clamp I was using. <laughs> yeah, that definitely makes life easier, doesn't it? It should come out without having to beat them. I'm also going to feel for how much um, guide play there is. It actually feels pretty good. That one's fine. Still nothing screaming at me that it's screwed. Go take a quick peek. I don't see anything. And the fact that you need to get cleaned up. I almost got some pitting. A bit of rust pitting up in there. I actually got a valve grinding machine. I traded YouTuber uh hook me up with it but it's missing some pieces so unfortunately I can't cut the valve with it all right so I'm gonna go wash this mess up take a wire wheel get some of this crap off of here this is what was holding the the jug got stuck on there and we got also the other surface that's an issue to watch out for is right here I know we had blow by in one of them and again that's the uh, the exhaust escaping or the, the compression escaping out and around and it wasn't torqued down too much and what happens is if it runs too long you see it right there all the black if it runs too long like that it'll actually burn that aluminum away so probably we'll take a cylinder we'll lap a, uh, a cylinder into there and see if we get a good pattern all the way around well it take some time to get this one cleaned up get all the crap off of it and uh, move forward you can clean up those exhaust thread studs. A little wire wheel action. So this cylinder head that I grabbed from my stash, the problem with this one is, I'll show you, the guides. You can rock that valve back and forth about an eighth of an inch. Especially as you get closer to, that's about where the stroke is. So that's so bad. Over time, every time the valve closes, and then it kind of gets drawn into the center. And when that happens, it works as I throw the valve away. As it works it and it hammers it, it puts stress on the stem right here. Eventually it'll break the valve at that location and drop a valve. That's what's bad about using this. That's why I didn't use this head. This is the engine actually that came, the heads that came with the bus, my thumbnail, the red and white bus, Lucy. These are the heads that came with that engine. And at that, at that time they were no good. But the valve is good. We're gonna go use that in our cleaned up head right behind you. I got that cleaned up pretty good. I used up a, a roll lock wheel with a scotch brite on it. And it should be this cylinder right here. So we need a valve for. And that one. So it has a little bit of play. It's nothing like the one on the other head. Woohoo! Let's go lap them in. So this is the setup I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna have a valve, a piece of hose, and then a drill on the end of it. Pull down on it with some uh, lapping compound and make the two very happily surfaces 
co-mingle together. Let's go get that set up and do some buffing. You hear the sound change? You hear it push out all the sand. So I'm gonna do that to all of them and I'll bring you back. So the next surface I'm concerned about is again where the compression leaks out where it gets blow by right in there and this these heads were loose at least one of them was so we're gonna do the same I'm gonna throw some lapping compound on a cylinder I'm just gonna use the cylinder to get in there I'm going to keep doing that and I'll probably come back with a Sharpie and I'll write, um, I'll color it in with a Sharpie and I'll see if it erases the print all the way around and we have a good seal going all the way in. So in other words, I'm going to ground the, the steel into the aluminum to try to make the aluminum flat as possible going around. I cleaned them over in the parts washer again to get rid of all that aggregate because the last thing you want is that going through the combustion chamber and chewing up your stuff the seat looks pretty good going all the way around where the jug mates up you can see a good uh, mating surface where the compound made a solid line going around them so they look pretty good and then the valve surfaces too have a nice pattern on them the same don't see any cracks in between so i think you should recover pretty good and again this is uh, i actually changed this valve out to a different one and it has even less play than the other one did so i'm happy with that all right one more to do i'm ready to put them back on actually you know what i got i still have to uh drill out the two screws that hold the tin down they were not having it So I'm getting ready to put the valves in the other cylinder head. And these are the two exhaust valves that we're in. This is the one that broke that I tapped on the stem from the outside with the spring and gave her a couple of shots and it fell off internally. I just wanted to show all the pitting that was on that one. It definitely uh, contributed to its demise. It should not have happened for what I did. I actually kind of think, looking at the stem too, you can kind of see where it had almost like a little bit of a, one of them showed it. There it is right there. You can see the color difference in the middle. It actually kind of like it had partial crack in it maybe. But yeah, pitting's no good. Just same with the springs. I'm going to change all the springs on this side too because they got rust on them. They do not like to hold up to... Uh, getting pits in it. You can see the difference on that one. Now this is the other exhaust valve that was in it. You could see a little happening right there. I'm going to go change that one out too to a different one. You can see a little bit of pitting right there. This, I think this is the cylinder that water had come in on and this is one that I stole out of another head. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go find one more of those and I'll finish this cylinder head up. So I knocked out a bunch of other stuff. Got it all cleaned and detailed and put away. The car, I'm not gonna show the car rebuild. I've done it many a times, but we will pop the top off and see what it looks like inside. And how fuel has treated it. Sitting the last 
I'm gonna guess 40 years probably. When we first went to go do this, the linkage was frozen. The throttle plate on the bottom was frozen. I had to kind of tap it back and forth and spray some lube down in there just to get the throttle to move. So I suspect it's gonna need some love. I think I have a carb kit. A bunch of stuff's getting hard to find. It's all on your order stuff and it shows up two months later after being back ordered. I think that might have come in. All right, let's go give her a who's your daddy. And we're going in. Definitely looks like it's uh, <laughs> backfired through the carb a few times. Judging by how much carbon is up here, usually this area is clean, there's nothing. Definitely, uh, not terrible though. The float bowls that's the stuff that I sprayed into it. The fuel, let's um, bump that out. Yeah, the bowl's actually fairly clean. Good, you know, the other thing is going to be is, uh, a diaphragm for the accelerator pump, which is underneath here. I'll show you that in a second after I take it apart. Get brittle over time. Yeah, it was hard as a rock. <laughs> that accelerator pump. I'm not going to do much accelerating. All right, I'm going to get the rest of the bits out of it and the jets and everything and all the loose crap that is on it and go soak that and we'll get into putting the cylinder heads on the engine. I think we're ready to rock and roll. The new push rod tubes. Of course, this one's got a dent in it. They have a seam on them, a welded seam. You want to make sure that, that kind of faces upward. It's a little bit of a juggling match to put the cylinder head on and put those tubes in at the same time. Uh, which cylinder head we want to go with? We want to go with the, this is three and four, so we want the better of the two. Because as they wear out, three and four burns up faster. All the threads have been cleaned up on everything. Off camera and so I'm gonna go just play a little game of uh, stacking the push rod tubes underneath there you could throw a push rod in each one kind of helps hold it from falling out but I'm just gonna keep juggling all those in the place and they have like a crush to them what I mean by that is there's a spring loaded you can see it on the, the sides of it so when you're trying to crank down on the cylinder head they will fight you a little bit especially if you're using new ones so you kind of take your torque wrench and actually even before the torque wrench you, you kind of just draw all the hardware down Make sure our seams are facing up. I'm gonna go pop that hardware on there. We're just gonna kind of draw it down and then we're gonna get into torquing them. These actually aren't too bad. Sometimes you can barely even see the top of the studs that are on them. Let me go throw that hardware on there. Move Joe over the other side. Yeah, so I'm just gonna run them down. See how it's, the head, head's literally like, quarter inch from even being close to being run down the home. And then I'm going to switch over to a torque wrench. Once they're all I got the torque wrench set at ah, like 15. 
that's how much more I could still win. Yeah. See how far that drew down? I'm gonna go suck them down a little bit further just for the uh, essence of speed. I'm concerned about, I don't know about you, is that any of these studs decide to pull up out of the case, which is a possibility that they can do that too. Anyway. You think? That just happened to us on the very first one. That sucks. One. Two. I think that's the one that was loose on us. They do make a repair for it. Ugh. They had some little um, oversized with uh, larger threads on the bottom. You, you can cut them in. I'm just checking to see which ones are going to go pull now. So I got two of them that did pull. So I sent out the VW cry for help and see if possibly I can locate a set. So I switched over to the other side. And I have a feeling that is a message coming back from him right now. I'm running them all down to 15. And then I'll step it up to 24. Plus, I want to make sure I don't have any other ones that are failing. Which is a mistake on my part too, because I really should have caught that because I knew the one of them, the nut was backed off when we took it apart. Gonna go them real, real quick. Just making sure they're all up against the click. That side's fine. Next would be the rocker shaft assembly. Kind of see anything. I want to line up all the rockers to their home. May have a spring washer and a eight mil nut. What'll happen is it'll run, but number four cylinder is going to have blow by because of that issue. Not run well. It's gonna sound like it has a constant exhaust leak whenever you get on the throttle. That's when I was taking the jugs and I was trying to flatten them to the head. That's what I was talking about then too. Same problem. Generally it's from overheating. And the mouse nest that we took out of this was a good example of what causes an issue. We have to go back and adjust all of them. I have somebody searching their stash for them right now. Hopefully that comes through. If not, we're gonna order them. This video will be a while. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do the oil filter, oil screen, I should say. I'm gonna do one of those going in. Either. 
the thing a lot of people do, they're tempted to do, is they lose the nuts that come with it. They're like little castle nuts. I'll show you one. So they do not have, you know, they're capped on one end. So when you run them down, if you lose them, you put regular nuts on them, it oil will leak right through the center of the stud. Later on, they got rid of this because a lot of people, what they were doing is changing oil. And we just pull that center out and it would never wash the screen. And we need copper washers go on each one. And that's it. Just suck all that down nice and light so you don't strip them out. And it's because you our carb is doing. Looks decent enough. I'm gonna go rinse that stuff off with some water. Put it back together. And after putting out the APB, I was able to find three of them from a friend who had them, who I told to order a bunch. <laughs> so that I would have them when they're needed. So that's the oversized end. This is what it's like stock. So we're gonna go call that 850. And this one goes up to uh, 30, so it's 45 thousandths larger. You can see it's got a little self-tapper in it. And the, the stud shaft is uh, larger. It's a joke there. <laughs> anyway, so this is what's in there. Longer, but you know, this is the upper. We're gonna go continue to pull this one out. And go put these in, see if that'll fix us. I know this is gonna seem weird, what I'm gonna do. I'm going to continue to run that nut down and what it's actually doing is pulling up on the whole assembly and I want it to do that. Why do you ask? Because I want it to take all the threads that failed with it. See how far down it is? And I want it to rip right out of there. And what will happen is it'll take the threads with it. And it gives you a clean shot to move forward with the, the new one. In other words, it's kind of normally you would drill it a little bit larger and then get it set to, to do a tap instead of drilling it. This just does it for you. I'm going to uh, see all the threads, how it came with it. And then the new one, watch, oh, it just falls right in the hole. I do have to take the head off. I thought I was able to do it through the head. I do remember being able to do that. Actually, I think you could probably thread it through. I'm going to go set up a set of uh, nuts on here so I could run that down. Once it gets past a little further than that, it'll be able to drop in. And then we got to tap it into the rest of it. They do make something that grabs the ends of the threads for it. I'm just going to double nut it. And that should be enough for us to feed it in there. And hopefully as soon as I go to clear, I'm going to hit you in the head with a ratchet. I'm going to move you. So as soon as it clears the head, it should just drop right in down to the lower level. And the idea is if the engine is still in the car and it happens, it was a, it was a fix to be able to do it in the car. Whereas they do make something that's called the case savers. You have to, you have to split the case, bring it to a machine shop and they install a setup built into the case, but you got to take the whole case apart. I think my tins are getting me. Moved around so I can actually get some push on it. The engine's against the bench on the other side.
I'm gonna grind a little bit of leading edge on that so it helps, helps get it started. She's having a little trouble getting that first little initiation. Yeah, something like that, a little bit of lead on it. A little bit more. Now I should be able to back off the top nut. Might have to put a wrench on it. There it goes. That's one done. And I can get retorqued as I find out what I do with my washer. Torque wrench is on 24. I'm just gonna run them in first. I went and I did all the other ones just because I want to see if any other ones were gonna go pull out, but let's go do the normal torque pattern. That one's already clicking. There we go. Come on. <laughs> there. Yeah, we got that one. Here's our other victim. Ha! Saved! <laughs> so I cleaned up a rear pulley. So, and I got some anti seeds in there too. I'll keep the oil in. I'm going to throw a couple of quarts of oil in it. So I think we're ready to spin it up. Hopefully that's not bent. <laughs> or else it's uh, going to get corrected while it's on there. Yeah, I'm going to throw some oil in it and get the starter back on it. We'll spin it a little bit and then we'll adjust the valves. Getting ready to crank it with the starter. I want to just spin it by hand. I don't hear anything funky. <laughs> At first it was clunking when we first were doing it, but that was that valve that had lost its keepers. And so we'll give her a spin of a little bit of a crank and then we'll adjust the valve. Just want things to kind of settle a little bit. We'll just take a quick eyeball of stuff. Nice. Now I'm going to go point that rotor at number one, which I think was right here. It's either going to be here or here. There's two locations, normal. And that will make it so you can adjust number one cylinder. The both valves will be back, which they are, but they're tight. I have to adjust them. So that one's in compression stroke. I got it wrong. It is right there. 
I'll get it. Anyway. No, I had it right. It's just that I was looking at the valves. One's in further than the other, but it's in further because of the valve adjustment, not because of... I'm not in the right location. So I'm just going to go back them both off where they are not touching. And we'll sneak up on it. Here we go. You always want to do them on cold on a VW. Six thou. You can go, if you find your motor's a little on the noisy side, you can do four, but you just got to keep an eye on it because what happens is the valve adjustment will tighten up over time. And if it tightens up over time, it'll burn a valve. That feels pretty good. Just light drag. And sometimes when you're tightening it down, it'll change because of the, the threads getting pulled up from the nut. It, it pulls the whole thing to one side a little bit. And it feels pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go point the rotor at number two cylinder. So I, I spin it actually backwards. And now I'm set up for number two. I'll close it tight. Do the same, I'll just do the same thing all the way around. All right, they're all adjusted, I'm gonna go spin it again. That front pulley wobble. They can get pretty tight when you're trying to take them off. And I'm sure whatever that got, came off of took on some damage, but still better than what we had. I'll take that and uh, beat it with a hammer. <laughs> we'll get it straight. Uh, let's go throw the compression test gauge in it and see what we get. Number one. <laughs> Not at that RPM, are you gonna get anything? Look, the battery charge it to it. See what we get now. That's what we need. Now let's go get some numbers. Number one. <laughs> Number two. Buck 20, that's more like it. Number three. 110. And number four. And 110-ish also. So I got 90, 120, 110 and 110. I think that 90 will come up. That is the cylinder, I believe, that we honed and put on there. And the honing does not help. It actually causes a leak for a little while until it uh, gets kind of polished in. So I think that those numbers will come up. I think we're fine. That cylinder probably come up to about 100 or 110 and we're all within uh, a good range. Yeah, you kind of 15, 20 pounds you want to be in. Any more than that, you're going to start getting a, a skip at an idle on one cylinder. Good, I think we've got a good uh, long block to work with. Now it just needs other, other little bits to make, make brum brum noises. Well, let's check on number one. Yeah, it's still at 90. It's spinning a little bit, just see if we can get some good oil flow. Takes a little bit for those tubes to fill up because I blew them out, make sure there's nothing in them. Yeah, we're dripping on all of them. Good. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit and uh, the engine is all together other than the tins. We're gonna take that back apart. I'm gonna take that back apart a little bit later and do an offset oil cooler and put them on, but I wanna fire it up and run it with everything off just in case we have any issues. Plus it's uh, a little good for show and tell. Without further ado, I just wanted to show what's inside the distributor for the vacuum advance. I didn't show it earlier. I have a vacuum hose on it. I'm just going to draw on it. If you watch the, the, the points rotate, 
that's the advance that you get from the vacuum side of it along with the mechanical advance that's in the bottom of the distributor so that seems to work if you draw on that you keep sucking air it means the diaphragm blew out in this which is common this goes up to the carburetor and there's a metal tube that goes on there sometimes that is missing and it doesn't have the service loop in it so gas fumes go down and take out the diaphragm so it's important to have that there you go that's the factory one you can see it on there it's right to the side of the carb i think we're to the part of the show where we could fire it up so let's get some gas in it you know fill up that float bowl i took care of the pulley took the bend out of that or most of it anyway put a different fuel pump on it one that works not that we're using it right now there we go We'll dribble down it. Let's go hook up some ground. Let's see what we get. No exhaust. This could be a tad loud, hopefully. I got no throttle return spring. Hold on a second. I gotta get a throttle return spring. Yeah, last thing I need to do is fire it up and let it run full throttle. Ready to make noise? Here we go. Let's go fire it up again. I think it might be out of gas. <laughs> it shoot fire out all four corners. I saw it shoot raw. I don't know if that was raw fuel or oil or what that was on the number four cylinder. It's not much gas. Let's see what it's got. Let's see if it'll idle. go fill it up over time but try it again sounds pretty good probably wouldn't be a bad test to do a compression test after it runs a little bit see if our numbers come up you could probably run for about five minutes with uh, no tins on it it's not going to overheat choke comes off I can dial that air fuel mix in, in on that carb too much you can't get the screwdriver on the air fuel mix it's all the way in that's one turn out let's hit it again we get a little bit of heat in it not much they're not hot yet
knocking out. I was wondering why I was breaking up the wire on the coil was grounding up against the intake. And makes a boring noise. <laughs> I think you're doing pretty good. I'm gonna do uh, pop the plugs out real quick. Let's go do a compression test and see what our numbers turned into. Now everything kind of seated a little bit. Yeah, so we get a number one. Yeah, 115, 120. Yeah, we'll call that 120. I guess it's that line right there. So it was at 80. 80 or 90, that's the one we, again, that we changed the jug on and honed. And let's go see how the other ones do. And number two. It's what, 130-ish? And number three. And again, 130-ish, 130, 135. Call it 130. And number four. One fifteen. We'll call it probably one fifteen. There's our difference. It's before again. That was with a, a dead battery though, so it wasn't helping our numbers any. But they had definitely popped up to right where they should be. That's a a good set right there. Just fifteen pounds between the high and the low. That's awesome. That will not have any issues whatsoever. And it's got plenty of life left in it. I would say you could probably run this engine under normal circumstances. It's probably got 40 or 50,000 miles in it. Easy. Uh, bottom end, a little on the sloppy side, is probably yeah, what would take it out of the game. That or mice get in it and it causes them to overheat. But I think that is a, uh, a save, I would call it. <laughs> For uh, the pile of junk that it was that we dragged out of there and the issues that it had, it, it had a valve that was uh, off its keepers, not even doing anything. The rocker assembly all fell apart and the valve was slapping into the piston. It was its main issue, probably why it was taken apart from whatever engine or car that it was pulled from and you know put the rest was for that. That was the original failure. And then I think just from sitting, all the rocker assembly that locked up on that side. The exhaust valve was rotted on number one cylinder. I whacked it with a hammer and it fell apart <laughs> inside. So uh, we uh, used some used parts. I don't think we had much in it. The only thing we, uh, money wise, was push rod tubes, which was like 18 bucks. Carb kit, I think, was like 20, 25 bucks in oil. That's all we really used. Everything else is just used junk that I had laying around that we uh, pieced it back together. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> this can go in pretty much anything because it's set up for a bus with the uh, mounts for a uh, mustache bar, can go in a dune buggy, can go in a beetle, can go in a kit car. Uh, I can't show you that right now. And you know, it can go into any one of them just by changing whatever tins you have on the outside. Right now, the stuff that I have for it, which is like some header exhaust and um, uh, fan shroud, that's a simple one, it is more for like a, a dune buggy or a trike or something along those lines. I do have a, a plan for this engine and I will shoot that will be at a, a different date, different video. And it already has a home. If not, something blows up on me between now and then, this will be the backup engine for that. So we got it taken care of. Guys, with that, I'm gonna go sign off. And thank you all for hanging out with me so much. Having a little bit of fun, a little bit of ranching on some old junk, bringing it back to life. And that's all the next one. See you soon, bye. What, you didn't think I was gonna show you it all together? <laughs> Had to change the rear tin here because the offset of the generator did not line up with the crank.
So I took it back apart and stole one from another one. Put it in the right position. Got headers on it for now. Uh, it's probably going to have a stinger coming straight up off of this way, but this is what was mocked up. I think I had this on Krusty at one time. Not sure. All right, you want to fire it up again? Let's see what we get. The carb is suspect. I don't think it has a good idle circuit. But again, it's just a guess right now. We need to get 12 volts to the coil, into the to the coil, into the carburetor. There's a idle shut off solenoid that might be no good. Usually it clicks when you put power to it. It's clicking, whether it's moving internally, it's a different story. All right, shall we? I think we're all set. Circuit. Let me see if I can uh, get it so I can grab the throttle. The choke is on right now, too. Quiet, huh? Choke's still on. As soon as that choke comes off, that was gonna die. Yeah. It's not taking that. There's no idle circuit, no fuel coming in at an idle. How's that, huh? <laughs> Happy with it. Got a couple extra tins that need to go on yet. There's a couple that hang down below, kind of steer the cooling air down around the cylinder heads out and out this direction. Right now it's set up for an, an open an open car, not boxed in. So it's not that important. No thermostat in it. I changed the oil cooler over to the offset one. So now that is out of the stream and it allows the cooling air to come down over these two cylinders evenly where before it was in the path. So it kind of choked off this side and gave a, uh, some engine issues. Uh, burning valves, number three cylinder gets real hot, that kind of thing. I think I'm good to go other than, you know, probably working that carb a little bit. Gonna change the flywheel over to the other one that, somewhere, that came with the clutch. Put, I'll put that whole setup on when I get out of the engine stand. And I think it's pretty good. Not bad for a $40 investment, huh? <laughs> In a little bit of time. All right guys, now I'm done. I'm gonna thank y'all again for hanging out with me, having a little bit of fun, bringing in uh, rusty junk back to life. Till the next one, see you later. I gotta clean up. What a mess. Closer.
cool aftermath of the surgery.